Ciao everyone, this is Esther. Alfred here. Of You, Me and Sicily and welcome back to our channel or if you're new around here, welcome to You, Me and Sicily. We're going to take you to a few gems around Sicily, you know, but there are so many. We could have basically every single show just talking about the gems, but here is our small list. We're going to go to Mistretta, we're going to go to Tusa, we're going to go to Maza, uh, Mazememi, Palma de Montechiaro, Termini Mresi. These are what we call small town gems, kind of like rhinestones, so to speak, that kind of circle all the major stars in Sicily. There's a million of them, as she said, and you're going to enjoy them all. That's for sure. All right. Let's start out in Mistretta, in the province of Messina. We did an entire episode on this town. What a great little town it is. And we had our friend Gaetano Russo take us around. I got to tell you, Alfred, going up that hill to visit that castle, which, by the way, has the most amazing view of the area, was quite hard. And I remember coming down and being like, oh, a little bit sore. So it's a hike up there. But let me tell you, look at this video, at the beautiful scenery that you can see from the castle. Wait a minute. A little bit sore as she was coming down. She was crawling. She was completely cramped up. She looked like the Tin Man on The Wizard of Oz. She couldn't move. Mr. Exaggerator in Chief. Take a look. Parco de Nebrodi. Those Nebrodi Mountains are so underrated. It is the largest mountain range here in Sicily after, of course, we've got the Madonia in the Palermo area and Mount Etna. But the Nebrodi Mountains are just splattered with these small, quaint towns and cities on tops of hills in the middle of forests. It is just one of those hidden treasures here in Sicily. Why did you like Mistretta, Esther? Give me like two reasons that you're suggesting to people that they should go besides... The castle. The castle. The views from the castle. The and views. it's another one of those little towns where every every single street has a different characteristic. Every different street has a different view. Every street has just something to marvel at. It was one of those towns where everywhere I turned, I said, wow, wow. The thing that I liked about Mistretta was the quaintness of the town. It's a very quaint town. It's not a big urban center. It's a quaint town. Kind of ancient, too, in my view. She went one way, I went the other way, so I got to look at a different set of stuff on it. One thing I know is that a national treasure lives there. What's the fellow's name? Yeah, Gaetano Russo. He is one of the people that is so unique on UNESCO's world's most valuable human being because of some of the sculptings that he's done with stone. So very, very interesting guy. And of course, we featured him on the episode called Mistretta. Leo Caspis in a stone with the product of Mistretta in the investor. Only. In Greco, in Greek times. It's just a wonderful little town. It's a good way to, as you're passing through the area in Messina. Pull off the road, spend an hour or two there, have Easily a cup of coffee, accessible. take some photos, and you're really going to like it. I promise you that much. <laughs> All right, and before we leave, I tried some sweets that are particular to the area. Take a look. Typical sweets from the Sretta. Pasta reale. Pasta reale. Almond, sugar, flour. Ricciolini. Ricciolini. Okay. I have to try this because I love it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Light, tasty. This is dough, but this is a little bit of almond. Yes. International cappuccino. <laughs> non tipico mislet. Next, we're going to 
going to head over to Tusa, also in the province of Messina. What a great adventure this was because we went with Alfred's cousin Joe and her husband Jim. She was going back to her roots, rediscovering her roots, and what an experience that was witnessing as she got to the town where her ancestors are from. <laughs> Charming. Your grandfather was Saint Giovanni? Was Giovanni. Giovanni. He wasn't a saint, I don't think, but and the castle's up this way. Actually I believe it was your mother's side of the family because she's related to me on the the other side. Actually she might be related to me on both sides. I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> she was a Teresi, her maiden name, and she's related to me on the Teresi side. But her mother uh, I believe here, her mother's family hailed from Tusa, so she always had that little missing link uh, that she wanted to solve, and she did. What a great little town. Well, again, there's a beautiful castle. It wasn't as high up as Mistretta, but well worth seeing. Boy, we should do a whole episode on the castles of Sicily. And then it was another one of those towns where you walked from street to street, very quaint, very narrow streets, and you just walked up and down to admire all the views. This is such another one of those medieval towns. Well, you know, Esther, there's actually two different sections of Tusa. Where the town is, is up, is elevated, okay? You have to climb up the, the hill over there. And yet, on the bottom part is where the beach area is. So there's basically mm -hmm. two different areas over there. The other one is Castel de Tusa. Castel de Tusa. But season. I remember driving up there, so it was so funny, you guys. So this was the first time that we were going to Tusa, and we're driving. And I said, oh, maybe it's that little hilltop town. Alfred's like, no, not yet, not yet. Then as we kept going and driving around, it got closer and closer and closer, and we discovered that it was actually that far away town on a hilltop. Very small town, but a very small population as well, but well worth seeing for sure. And I loved, by the way, the little gates. And that's another thing that's so typical here in Sicily to see the gate, the Porta, Porta de Palermo, the gate to Palermo. In each one of these towns, there was one in uh, Termini e Meresti, where, t where we're going to next. But these structures are just such a treasure. Come on. Tutto a posto? Via tutti. What happening, what's happened in Tusa has happened in many small communities all over Sicily, that of depopulation. Um, younger kids don't want to stay in an older town like that with full of older citizens that essentially has no job opportunities for them and nothing for them to do, so they move into the urban areas. And so as a result, about a third of Tucson uh, apartments and houses are unfortunately empty. But on the other side of the story, for those wanting to rebirth the area, it's a good opportunity for people to go there and they can get some great housing for unbelievably inexpensive money. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but you can rent the places for next to nothing too. So it's a great place, good location. Actually, Tusa. that's true in, also in Mistretta. I saw a lot of Bendishi, Apita, a lot of for sale, a lot of for yeah. rent in a lot of these towns. But you know, it's one of those things I also ask your cousin Josephine, what it was like um, to visit her hometown, her ancestral hometown, and what her family must have thought. And, and take a listen to what she said. You know, you came here seeking, you know, to see what they left. Yeah. And what did they leave behind? Well, they left, left behind antiquity, really. This is an old, old city. And I love old, and I love this stone and the doors and the charm of this place but it looks like a place that is very poor 
and that doesn't offer much for growth. And I think they had bigger intentions. And I think that's why they left. But in terms of the beauty and the simplicity and the, the nature here, While in that area, why not stop by San Agata de Militello? There's a great castle called the Galeo Castle. It's quite big, and when you go inside, it's very interesting. You go downstairs, that's where they, uh, the workers stayed, that's where they kept the horses. Questi sono le stalle del principe. Da notare dove mangiavano i cavalli. That's where they made wine and so forth. And as you go through the rooms, there's things that people collected and found from the area. So it's, mm -hmm. historically, it's a beautiful place to see how uh, people lived in Sicily during the old times. But the other thing is you go upstairs and the views of the sea and also the mountains are excellent. We met with a friend there who took us around and explained about all the important things to see there. Allora, ora guardiamo l'interno della chiesa del castello. È la prima chiesa di Sant'Agata di Militello. Now we're going to head west into the province of Palermo and Termini in Meresi. It is such a beautiful little town, very accessible off the highway and one of the most important towns in the province of Palermo for many reasons. The Battle of Himera, that was a very decisive battle, Alfred. I think uh, if you're a history buff like I am, you ought to read about the relationship between first the, the Phoenicians and the Carthaginians, which are I guess was in Libya, modern day Libya today, on the one side, and on the other side with the Punic War, the relationship between the Greeks, the Greeks, the Romans, the Phoenicians, Hannibal, his grandfather. Mm -hmm. There's a few hundred year period there that it just makes fascinating, understandable. If once you understand that stuff a little bit, when you go and see a bunch of rocks, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. The Temple of you're Victory. Gonna, you're going to say, holy smokes. The Temple of Victory is located right outside the uh, main town of Termini Meresi. And if you drive by, you don't go too fast because there aren't any big signs saying this is the site of one of the most important battles where a, a temple was built in honor of it. Because, you know, it's like everything here in Sicily. They, you know, it's like the Mona Lisa. What do you like to say? They keep it in the closet. <laughs> No, Esther, they don't this, show it. If this place was in the United States, it would be yeah. a national treasure. Exactly. And here it's just a bunch of rubble, and it irritates me. Like, there's a lot of bunches of rubble throughout history uh, that are littered in Sicily that they don't have the funds to fix. But I could say this, Esther. Or talk about, or publicize, even that is a big thing yeah. here. Let me just say one more thing, yeah. okay, before you talk about uh, the beautiful town. There's a great restaurant right across the oh, street. Oh, yeah. Called Himera. It's called the Himera, restaurant right? of Himera. And it's right off the A19. It's really easy to find. But if you go there, Between try Termini, the fish. Between Termini, Meresi, and Campo Felice de Rocella. It's right. a great little town. It's a great place. Now, well, that's with, that really said, town. with that said, let Esther tell you a little bit about the, about, about the town. We arrived to the main church, the mother church dedicated to a uh, body. And you can sit there and people watch and look at this beautiful uh, church. And then you go straight into the public gardens and you can see the most beautiful panoramas of, um, of the water, of the port. And also Termini and Medesi has a significant port uh, over there. And then as you head down uh, into this quite big public garden, there's just more beautiful views. Of course, there's that main gate. <laughs> I love the gates, the Porta of Palermo. Porta Palermo also in Termini in Meresi. And by the way, there were some thermal baths there as well. You know, the last thing I wanted to say about the town, I mean, the, vi the video speaks for itself. 
Uh, obviously, we wouldn't highlight it if we didn't think very highly of it. But I had an opportunity while she was shooting. I was there, and I went down, and I had a cup of coffee at the local bar, and I was very impressed with the level of English that uh, some of the people, the residents of that area had. When I hear someone speaking English sitting next to me, I say, oh. And uh, <laughs> so I was very impressed uh, with that whole area. It's a great area. It's a gem. So here we are in Termini Imeres at one of our favorite restaurants. Those are some of the fish that you can pick from to eat. It's Saturday night and great, great ambiance going on here. And those are the Puccini, Mount, uh, Puccini mushrooms that were just picked from the Madonia Mountains. This is also a pizzeria. Ooh, look at those pizzas, yum. And here is our favorite bait waiter, Salvatore. Ciao. Tutto bene. Great night. And our dinner has just come out. I'm going to take you over here to Alfred. Ooh, look at that. Everyone's enjoying. Alfred, what are you having tonight? Oh, yeah. He's having Looks his grilled. meat. Sausage, lamb. And pork. And look what I'm having. Surprise, surprise. Super di cozzi. Mussels. Imeres is not far from the Madonia Mountains, the Nabrodi Mountains. So I highly suggest that when you come here, you don't just focus on Etna, which you know we love, but there are these incredible mountain ranges that offer such a unique experience that you wouldn't think about here in Sicily, from hiking to horseback riding to all these little quaint towns. So, you know, Take a look at a map. The Brody and Madonia Mountains are great places. So next, let's head over to the province of Agrigento and Palma de Monte Chiaro. Had so much fun with our friend Annalise, who is a chef, by the way. Walking around, we went into the palace where one of the sites of the Il Gattopado, the Leopard, which was uh, written by Tommaso de Lampedusa, probably one of the most important Italian and most important Sicilian pieces of literature that there is. Uh, and also uh, Lucchino Visconti did a whole movie about it, but that palace was just something to marvel at. There are several areas in Sicily that can lay claim to the famous uh, family of the, that that famous book was written about, The Leopard. Mm -hmm. uh, and this happens to be one of them. But going back to Annalisa, I just think that she's a perfect example of a successful Sicilian woman. Brava. Young, intelligent, profoundly competent, profoundly competent. And uh, we're very fortunate that she came into our life in terms of helping us do pieces like this and other stuff that and very uh, knowledgeable work, about the cuisine yeah. and the foods and the products that there are in the province of yeah. Agrigento and all over Sicily. Pancini and we have some semolina bread that's done locally. Uh, Annalisa what makes this bread so special? Oh, it's special for two reasons. First of all, because uh, it's made by durum wheat, semolina wheat. So, if uh, semolina flour, if we break this uh, this bread, we will see bread that is uh, yellow. The second thing, look, is really yellow. The flour is very grainy. And the second thing is that it's sesame seeds on the top. So in Sicily, especially in this area, it's very, very common to have sesame, seed, sesame seeds on the top. And uh, so this uh, makes this bread special. So, Alfred, what do you think? A little bit of hot, extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. Just a little salt, a little pepper, a piece of tomato. That's quintessential Sicily in my view. The bread is very good too. I agree. Uh -huh. I agree. Especially when it is uh, uh, still yes, hot, when it's hot with extra virgin olive oil, sea salt, and black pepper. So this is the monastery. Yeah. The Benedettini. We had so much fun going to the monastery where the nuns uh, still live and make all types of sweets. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. 
Buongiorno. Potremmo avere dei ricci? Cosa, sì. cosa vendete? And of course they don't want to be seen, so you go inside and there's this revolving structure and you ask for whatever you want and, and they put it in there and it revolves and you get the suite and it helps support the monastery. That was a very cool experience, very unique experience, I must say. I remember years ago that our friend Bruno in, in Otigi showed us the same thing. They have those little those little lazy Susan type of things where you know, there's a glass there and she says, what do you want? You say, I want a cookie. Uh, when I, my hometown in Lawrence, they used to have those too. You would go into an alley and they would say, what do you want? And I'd say, give me a bag of weed. <laughs> <laughs> and they would say, be right back. Uh, joke. Just a joke. So folks. going to the palace, going to the monastery is quite an experience in Palma de Monte Chiara. But again, just walking around. And then there's the marina of uh, Palma de Monte Chiara. You go down the road from the main town. And it's a beautiful place to... Uh, Go swimming, go boating, get a gelato or something like that. But you'll find in a lot of towns in Sicily, you'll have an ancient part like in Tusa. And then there's, you know, another part. Also, Ragusa is a great example. You know, you have the ancient part and then you have the marina of Ragusa. So in, in these towns, there are multiple things to do and see. It's called the Centro Storico area. Those are the historical centers. Mm -hmm. If possible, do not drive your cars there. <laughs> Those are the roads that were built in the 17th and 18th centuries and are very skinny and they're harrowing. Oh, so yeah. stay away from those if you possibly well, can. Well, park down below yes. and walk yeah. up. That's for Correct. sure. Correct. <laughs> uh, we put up our announcement just two weeks ago about our trinacrias, our sterling silver trinacrias that are about as big as a quarter, uh, and people, you should be getting orders left and right. Uh, we'll be getting some that will be available by the time we get back there in March or sometime. But we're back there, you, you mean back the United to the States. States? Back to the States. And uh, we're advising people to pre-order them because by the time we get them, uh, they'll be gone. So if you'd like a beautiful uh, little present, uh, please contact Esther. Uh, they make good birthday presents. They're unisex. Plenty of men wear them, including myself. Uh, birthday presents, Christmas presents, Very whatever, popular. right? You have to get your own charm. We don't, I mean, your own charm, your own uh, chain. thing. Uh, what was it called? Chain. Chain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some people use a beautiful little a rope, other people use sterling silver, but it's a sterling silver piece, so you know, do what you want to do with it. Anyways, message her, she'll take care of it. So, should we go to the province of Siracusa? Sure, I love Siracusa. Where are we going? Let's go to Mazamami. Mazamami? South and east here in Sicily. That little town center is very cool. What a great place to pick a restaurant and just sit and enjoy people watching. That whole area is great from Mazamani to Pacino to Porto Palo and up a little bit north of that to Noto. That whole area over there is a study that you can have a great time. But Mazamani has I think it's a little bit more quaint. history. It's very yeah, quaint. And a it's bit known more history for the tuna the fishing, right? The tonada is still there. Uh, there's a, a great little shops that sell all types of tuna from tuna and oil. Well, it was, that's what it was known for. It was known for the, yeah. I think it was called the Mazzata, where uh, they had the big uh, tuna kill hunt uh, every year with the, with the, uh, the Nets Esther. Mm -hmm. And they, and they, they held and they would that kill was over, the tonada. Huh? The tonada. Right. And then what they would do is they would, uh, right there they had the places where they smoked them and canned them. And I mean, it was really a, uh, uh, Very important part of, of the, the tuna Sicilian industry. economy right. here, right? Fishing. Also in Castellamare del Golfo, inside the castle, yep. there's a museum and there's even old movies detailing the tuna fishing and how important it was here in Sicily. But the EU stepped in at the beginning, or I think it was even the UN stepped in because uh, it was just uh, too much. They were actually taking too many uh, bluefin tuna out. Oh, like all of them, and uh, they stopped that type of uh, uh, slaughter, they stopped the way of collecting the, the tuna. But it's still a very important place for tuna. Okay, so they have allowable tuna.
Well, tuna. nowadays, I was going to say, is one very interesting thing, mm-hmm. Esther. When you catch a tuna off the t- t- coast of Sicily and you got to try to sell it or export it, you have to source it. What does that mean, sourcing it? You have to name the boat, and you have to tell exactly how many fish or tuna came from that boat. That's what sourcing is. They want to know where did these fish come from. And believe it or not, the uh, authorities grab a lot of boats who Mm -hmm. have been illegally fishing. So they're trying to control the populations. But back Mm -hmm. in the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries, it was, you know, Katie by the door. If you're a tuna going by, you know, we're going to catch you type of thing. And to this day, you know, we did an interview uh, a few years back with a restaurant chef who said there's a shortage of tuna here in Sicily because the Japanese are buying it out. Uh, buying them all up but the other thing is that you know they still have tuna and a lot of very very delicious dishes with the tuna and I think the recipe I made was um, tuna with caramelized onions that was very good but not only the tuna is good down there that area is also known Eve for its olive oils of course Uh, it's known for its tomatoes and Pacino. pacino for heaven's sakes those are the best tomatoes in Europe coming from pacino the melons that I guess you can call them Crenshaw or honeydew melons that mm-hmm. are just unbelievable. Jella, melon Watermelons are uh, uh, good. Anything that type of a melon, strawberries, that area down there. Potatoes. Potatoes, the golden potatoes from that lower yep. Noto uh, province over there. Very they unique. are delicious. They'll melt in your mouth. I've never had such good potatoes in my life. <laughs> I hate to say that, but they're better than the Idaho potatoes or the Maine potatoes that I grew up on. They were really good. So it's a very interesting and right. bountiful area. So that's most amazing. I want to take a second and say thank you to you guys, not only for spending this time with us and listening to us babble about Sicily, but also thank you for your generosity helping support this type of video. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Tony and Enza Fusco from Canada. Thank you for your generosity. And thank you for being a sponsor of You, Me, and Sicily. And we have many others, and their names are going to be at the end of this video. You know, Esther, about 10% of our viewing audience actually tunes in from Canada. Did you, can you believe that? 10%. Another 10% from Australia. A big chunk of people from the UK. So people who are watching this just aren't American Sicilians, and we understand that completely. So thanks to your generosity, we're able to do things, present things, go places that we would not have otherwise been able to do. Once again, I tip my hat in respect to you. And by the way, the hat. <laughs> All things you, you mean Sicily hat. You are Wanted so to get one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we still have those available. Forgot that I had it on, but uh, thank you very much. Thank so we do much. have the hat, the t-shirts, the long sleeve t-shirts, yeah. but to end... <laughs> We are humbled. That was funny. No, that honestly, was funny. we are humbled. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting you, me, and Sicily. You know who you are. Yep. Hey, did you guys see my piece on the bacala? Well, my version of the bacala, Sicilian style. What did you guys think? Here's what I think I think it's a great piece. She worked really hard on it. By the way, it tasted really good. And if you would like to see I mean, Esther. Two types. Do more of her recipes. I'm trying. I'm working on it right now. I'd like her to put up one every couple of weeks because she's really a good cook. You know, she works at it. Thanks, honey. Let us know, okay? If you think that you would like to see another recipe from her vast collection of recently acquired skills of the same cooking, All right? <laughs> another PSA. Thank you very much. In all seriousness, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like, share it with a friend, and of course, we will see you on another episode of You, Me, and Sicily. But until then, we've got over 200 videos on and about from Sicily. Ciao. Sabanadiga. Ciao.